this morning on this Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen. What is today? <laughs> it's Resurrection Day. Amen. Amen. It's the day that Jesus Christ come back to life. But did he ever die? Did he ever die? Lord, each and every day, he lives in your heart. Amen. And without him, we would be nothing. Amen. But you know, we die to live, but he lived to die. Amen. And he gave his one and only, his most cherished possession was his life. And he gave it for you and I this day. And each and every day he gives his life for you unto the Father so we can be free from sin and the bondage that we go through each and every day. He releases us through. The chains are gone, in other words. Amen. We ain't hooked up no more. Once you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, you are free from sin. And the best part I love is death. Amen. We are free from that death because we'll rise each and every day when he opens our eyes and we see life. Amen. And one day when he steps out on that cloud, we're going to see life even further because we're going to be up there with him. Amen. Amen. We're going to be going to another life. Uh, a glorified life, in other words. One that he has presented to us over 2,000 years ago and said, all you got to do is follow me. All you got to do is believe in me. And you will be resurrected from the old person into the new. Amen. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather on the, the sky and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and over and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll stand on his promises this morning <laughs> what he did for us at the cross we're going to stand on that promise that he bled and died for us and said it is finished it is over it is complete but we're going to stand on that promise this morning Amen. and be resurrected again each and every day we resurrect each and every day each and every second each and every hour we are a new creature each and every time we think. Because he put it in our heart over 2,000 years ago. He gave us life. He gave us breath. He gave us everything we need to glorify him through the life of him. Amen. 
Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Take me. Let's take a moment this morning. Bow our heads. And give praise to Him in your own way. And in your own mind and in your own heart, and in your own spirit. Just give Him what you think and what you need this morning. Give it all to Him. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we gather together in this room. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be energized. I pray that our love for you will become real. And our life and our walk with you will become real more and more each and every day. I pray that we can put our minds aside. And our thoughts aside, we concentrate only on you this morning and the rest of our life here on earth, Lord. And Lord, one day we will meet you face to face. And all we have to do is believe in you and believe what you have done at the cross for us. That you died for our sins, Lord. And you rose so we could go for you. And 
blessed holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. It's just four simple words this morning. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Without him, without him, where would we be? Without him, what would we do each and every day? Without him, how could I even take another breath? He created life for us. He created you and I for his glory. Not for our own, but for his glory. And first and foremost, put the Son, Jesus Christ, first in your life. And let God have the glory <clears throat> from you. That's all we have to do. Put, our, put ourselves behind, put Jesus Christ first, and say, all glory unto God, that he presented his Son, which was part of him. God took something of his self and performed a miracle. And the Bible says it was 40 or more there that seen what went on that day when he died on the cross. Looking up at him, some were amazed, some was disgusted, some was, they had all different mindsets when they were looking at him up on that cross. Some didn't believe at all, but some did. Some thought he is never going to come back. But some thought he would. In our minds here today, do we believe wholeheartedly that he is the resurrection? He is the one that went to the cross. He is the one that bled and died for you. And he did rise again this morning. He did come back to life in order for us to go free. He died for you on the cross for your <coughs> sin to be abolished, right? He done that for you. But he rose again and went to the heavenly Father and come back and give you the Holy Spirit in your heart, which is the church. The church. He resurrected a church in you. He gives you life through that church. He gives the church to you for life. And we should, should present it each and every day with open doors and let people come in and let people go out. In other words, amen. Woo, praise God. Let your mind be open this morning and let Him come into the church. Not this building. Not this building, but your heart. And each and every day the Holy Spirit is, mm, is resurrected just a little bit more. You know how you slap around in your chair sometimes and you lay back and you raise up just a little bit and then you lay back down. You might raise up just a little bit more and then you lay back down. And then you raise up a little bit more. Before you know it, you're almost up and then all of a sudden you just fall back down and fall out again. <coughs> It happens to me all the time. <laughs> Praise God. I try to get up, and the more I try to get up, the more I fall back. <laughs> Praise God, because I don't have the energy, I don't have the, the, the dwelling inside of me telling me to get up and rise and go forth. <laughs> and I can't do it myself. It takes the energy of the Holy Spirit to push me up, to bring me up, to make me sit up straight, so I can look someone straight in the eye and say, He is my life. He is my joy. He lives in my heart. Amen. Can't you feel him this morning? Don't you know he's real? Don't you know he's there? Amen. Praise God. Let us, let us go into the passage now. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Start at verse 24. 
Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the day, in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, ye, you shall live. Amen. And whatso, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Jesus asked a question here. Do you believe wholeheartedly that? She said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the, son, the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. And when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. Now, verse 34 says, And said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come see. You see where I'm going with this? I, I, I hope you do. I, I, myself, I really don't know myself. Amen. But I do know this. We are talking about the resurrection of Lazarus coming from dead unto life. Right? <coughs> Jesus Christ come from dead unto life. Now Mary... Where does it say here? Did it come to Jesus? Oh, oh, oh. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Mary, uh, Martha met him. And they were wondering, where was he laid at? Where was he at? I read a, 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 an article the other day about where was Jesus at between the death and the resurrection? Between the death and when he come back to earth in spirit form. Where was he at? What did he do? What did he fulfill? Was he alive? Did he die in that time period? Was he dead for the three days? Or was he still in the tomb for three days? You see what I'm saying? When Lazarus died, where did he go? What did he do? Until Jesus come back and rose him up from the dead. Where did he go? What did he do? What did he do? He took your business. No matter what. When he was going to the cross, he took your business. When he got on the cross, he took your business. When he was... Three days in the tomb, he took care of business. He never stopped. He was always fulfilling what God ordained order was. He never stopped. He never stopped fulfilling God's order. You see what I'm saying here today? So when you and I pass away from this life. Are we going to ride around in the grave and wait on you to come back? No. Immediately when you pass away, you're going to still be doing the order of God. I know it's hard to understand this morning. Ain't it? It's hard to understand. Preacher, I'm going to be gone one day. I'm going to be in the grave. I'm going to be waiting on Jesus Christ. The Bible says the graves will open. Amen. And you will arrive. But at no time in your life God expects you to be idle in other words. Even when you are <coughs> passed on from this earth He's still going to be wanting and needing the glorification from you in order to glorify Him. The dead in Christ shall rise. Put the old man away. Put the new man in forth. You are dead, right? In this life. But you are alive in Christ. 
And when He raises you up, you're going to be alive again. But the moment we draw our last breath here on earth is the day that we're going to be going straight to heaven. Amen. Going straight to heaven. Now I have read, and I know some of y'all have too, and we still haven't figured out what's going to happen after this life, right? We have still haven't figured out what's going to take place after this life. But we argue with each other sometimes, don't we? About the resurrection, and about how it happened, and where we're going to go after we die, and what's going to happen after we die, and what we're going to do with heaven, or what we're not going to do with heaven. And we're still trying to figure out the, the, what the Bible has already told us through the Holy Spirit, which is truth. And all we have to do is the Holy, use the Holy Spirit to figure it out. God said, the only reason I created you is to glorify Him. The only reason we put here on earth is to glorify Him. Right? So why do we dig and paw and dig and paw trying to figure out what's going to happen next when we don't have a clue? We can go by what the Bible says, but the, can our little feeble minds totally understand what this book is saying? All we need to know is one thing. What the Bible says. Believe and you shall go to heaven. Believe and you shall be saved. Believe and you will be resurrected in the last day. That's all we need to figure out this morning. God's already got it figured out. So why don't we walk around each and every day trying to figure it out. And try to tell other folks that I have already got it figured out. We don't have a clue, people. We can read this book from cover to cover. But we cannot fully understand everything. Each and every day we have a new question on. Each and every day we're amongst each other trying to figure out about life after death. Instead of trying to figure out where we're going to go when we when we depart from this life. Amen. Resting in the arms of Jesus. That's where we're going to be at. Just like you are right now. If you believe in Him. That's what we need to concentrate on this Easter Sunday and every day of our life. I like to call it the Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Because this is the day of His resurrection. It's all about Him. It ain't all about us. So we need to go forth today and we need to get our minds right, including myself. I put myself front and center. I need to open my heart up and receive what He has to offer today. Instead of worried about the, all the nitpicking things and try to figure them out and don't have a clue. Put everything on the back burner but Jesus Christ. Put Him front and center. And when you need the knowledge to go forth, He will give it to you. When you need to enlighten someone on something spiritually, he will feed you and you can deliver it. He will give it to you, in other words, and you can deliver it. But until then, let's just have a mind focused on Him. And not worry about what Brother Joe's doing over there or what Sister Sue's doing. Let's put our mind at ease and think about what Jesus Christ is doing. And Lord, when we think about it, we concentrate on His resurrection and what He did today for you and I, we have a good feeling all over, don't we? Don't we feel good? Instead of worried about and, and complaining about each other's differences. I know I went around all the way around the mulberry bush and here I come back. Amen. But I want to tell you what here this morning. Mary was concentrating on Lazarus. And she was wondering, is he going to be raised up? Is Jesus Christ going to get back in time for him to be raised up? Or is he going to lie in that tomb 
and I'll never see him again. Word sick about it. Is Lazarus, is Jesus Christ going to come back in time? And you know, if Jesus Christ would have wanted it, he could have performed the miracle without even being there. Without even being there. He could have brought Lazarus back to life. Because Jesus, verse 43 says, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. <clears throat> you know he could have said that 47 miles away. He didn't have to get right up there at that tomb and go to talking. That's plain spoken, ain't he? He ain't got to get... You can hear him, and he's sitting at the right hand of God, I'm telling you here this morning. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He could have raised Lazarus up. When he was walking to face this earth, if God permitted it. See, that's where the, where the, where the, where the I guess you call it the river hits the river. When God permits it. Jesus Christ listened to God. Jesus Christ followed God when he walked to face this earth. And he's still doing it now. How do I know that? Because the one day God's going to say, go get my children. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus Christ is going to say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Father, I'm headed that way. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, still listening to His Father. Still listening to Him, no matter what. Because He knew that His Father never lied to Him. His Father never done anything to put Him to shame. His father stood by him no matter what. And when his father said, go forth, go forth. And when Jesus said, go forth, Lazarus, go forth, he arose and he comes straight out of that tomb. Amen. So we don't know. We don't know when God spoke and said, Jesus Christ, come out of that tomb. Right? We do know it was on the third day, right? But do we actually know that? That's when Mary and Martha and all of them come to the tomb. We don't know it was on the third day, right? The Bible says they went to the tomb on the third day. And he wasn't there. And I say again, where was he at in the meantime? He wasn't hung up in that tomb, people. He was taking care of business. Just like he expects you and I to do each and every day. Don't let this world be a hanger up unto you. Don't let this world drag you down. Arise and take your business when God says it's time. When God says it's time. And let me tell you one thing from experience. He will keep you busy if you will only allow it to happen in your life. But we a lot of times got more things to do, have we? I got, oh, Lord, I can't do that right now. They called me to do that. I can't do that right now. Oh, it happened to me a lot, I'm telling you. Somebody called me on the telephone, and I tell the wife, I ain't got time to talk to them today. She said, you should be the first and foremost one to talk to them because you're the preacher. And I felt about that talk. I felt about that talk. What if Martha would have called, called Jesus and said, well, old last dead in the tomb, and he said, well, I ain't got time to go right now. I ain't got time to go. That miracle wouldn't have been in the Bible, would it? We wouldn't have had a miracle to, to, to go by each and every day to fill our lives by. Come on. And when the other person sees the other person doing something, that's good. It is, it is an example to the other person. And before you know it, they're going to be picking the phone real good talking to people. Instead of saying, wait, I ain't got time right now. I got more important things to do. When you know as well as I do, if you pick that phone up, and God is saying pick that phone up, and you pick it up, 
when you're talking to that other person, God is talking through him or her. God wants it to happen, in other words. And He wants our life to be open each and every day to others. Amen. Hmm. Now, let's move back to the passage one more time. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Jesus just said before that, I am the resurrection, the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, ye shall die. Yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe it thou this. He asked her the question. And she said, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. She answered him quickly, in other words. It wasn't no hesitation. She told him, yes, I believe you. And I know who you are. And I believe that you can raise Lazarus up from the dead. I believe you can do all things. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe one day you're going to go to the tomb and you're going to raise up. You're going to rise one morning. And then one day, and then one day, we're going to all be with the Father. I believe that wholeheartedly. Mary didn't leave out parts of it. Mary believed the whole thing. And that's all we have to do is believe the believe. Let me, let, me, let me try to put it. All you have to do this morning in order to be saved, in order to get to heaven, in order to be a child of God, in order to walk with God, in order to be, like I said earlier, a child of God, is belief. Belief. It's that simple, Right? But you have to believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for you and I. And he was in the tomb. And he arose. And he went to the Heavenly Father. But like I said earlier, in the meantime, he was taking care of business. It didn't happen back to back to back to back to back like that. It was a little time in there that he was taking care of business. And he was moving forward. And he was going this way. And he was going that way. But he wasn't doing it on his own. He was doing it consulting the Father each and every time. Remember in the garden, he consulted him. Lord, if it's thy will, take that, this cup from me. He was steady asking him what to do next. What to do next. How should I do it? How should I not do it? Why did he do it? Because he believed in the one and only living God. And he heard his voice. That's something I, I was thinking about this morning. How do we know that it is God talking? How do we know it's not God talking? How do we know wholeheartedly? The more and more we have a relationship with God, we're going to know who's talking and who's not. It's so amazing to me. I know. Yesterday I called a good friend on the phone. Immediately when I said, how you doing? He said, doing fine. Or how are you? And I'm thinking, how in the world did this man know who I was? Is it the way I talk? Is it the way I use my words? How did he know who this was without even asking? How did he know that? Because me and this man, or this man and I, spent so many years together. And we've grown to know each other's voice. We've grown to know each other by the way he, he talks and the, by the way he presents himself. And who he is. And knowing that he is real. That's how we know each other, right? That's the way we get to know each other in a relationship. I mean, my wife, my daughter, can pick, even my grandbaby, pick the phone up and call me. I know immediately who's talking on the other end, right? 
So how in the world can we walk around each and every day wondering who is talking to me? Is it the devil or is it God? Well, let's get to know him today and you'll know the difference. That's all you have to do. Get to know him. Have a relationship with him. Know him one on one through the Holy Spirit that lives in your heart and go to the church daily. Because he's living there. Just bow your head. And while you're bowing your head, look at your heart. Look at your heart. And understand that He has risen. Not this very second, but over 2,000 years ago, He arose for you and I. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 15 says, And I am glad for your sakes that I was not here to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto them. Mm. He's not even here. Where is Jesus Christ at? Where is he at? I know he's here somewhere. Let's pray for him. Let's try to get him back. Let's, let's, let's try to get him to come into this church. Let's try to get him to come in and meet with us. Let's try to get him. Let's do everything possible today to try to get Jesus Christ to come into the church. Let's pray. Let's sing. Let's do all the things that we think we can conjure up Jesus Christ to come into the church. And pray for the Holy Spirit to come down. And pray for Him to come in, come into the church. If we do that, we're barking up the wrong tree. Because I'm going to tell you what here today, He's already here. Because He is risen. And He is in your heart. And He is, he is right there. We don't have to go far to meet Him. We don't have to call Him. He's already there. We don't have to try to conjure Him into coming. He's already there. He's in your heart right here. So praise Him and glorify Him instead of walking around all the time begging. Begging for something you already got. That's kind of silly. I got the living Word of God right here. And I'm begging for it each and every day at times. You're not I want to know. I want to eat. I want to live what's in this book. I got it. Why am I steady walking around wanting when I got it? I got the Holy Spirit living right here in my heart. Why am I wanting? Why am I needing? Why am I begging for it? He has already arose this morning and give it to you. Right there. Right there. Why do we walk around wanting it? And pray for what to happen. Energize me, O oh Lord. And He's waiting there for you. And all you have to do is get yourself out of the way and let Him energize you. See, God is... Jesus Christ was a perfect gentleman. He stood at the door. He was not. You gotta to go to over to the door and let him in. He's standing right now in your heart, begging for you to open the door and let him come in. The Holy Spirit's already there. The Holy Spirit's already there. And you know a lot of times he's knocking, wanting to come out. It works both ways. He goes in and out all the time, right? He's never been. He's never still. He's always taking care of business, right? And this morning, through His resurrection, He is taking care of business in each and every one of y'all's heart. He is begging you right now to open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit come in and let the Holy Spirit dwell in your heart. Let everything in your mind be put to the past and let Jesus Christ go in the future and open the door for you to go out and 
open the door for you to come in. Instead of walking around all the time, oh my God, when is the Holy Spirit going to come into me? When is the Holy Spirit going to energize me? When is the Holy Spirit going to take care of business? What is Jesus Christ doing? I need Him now. All you have to do is say, my God, He's already there. He's already here. I'm the one that's in the way. I'm not focusing on Him this morning. I'm focusing on, focusing on something entirely different. <laughs> but you know, old Mary, Martha and Mary, they believed it. Like I said a while ago, they didn't change tunes. They said right on through it. Yeah. And immediately answered Jesus and said, I believe in you. Can we do that here this morning? Have you ever thought that comes into your mind and say, I believe in Him. I'm going to take and let Him dwell in my heart and give me the strength to do God's will. Are we going to say that here this morning? Are we going to open our hearts and be saved? I want to enlighten you on something this morning. You don't need nobody. And don't ever let someone tell you that you do. You don't need nobody for you to be saved, for you to get to heaven, for you to walk with God. The only one that you need is God, Jesus Christ, and God Himself. That's all you need. Because you've got every tool you need sitting right here in this chair to be saved. You've got every tool that you need sitting right where you're at in order to get to Him. You don't need nothing else. Now I understand we, we need to be fed every once in a while. But if you're not fed out of that book, if you're not fed from that book, it's never born. So let's praise and glorify Him through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what He done at the cross. I think she's working on a popcorn machine. Praise God. Hey, man, praise God. It's been a good day in the Lord, hey. Has anybody, has anybody got a praise report this morning? Has anybody got anything they want to get off their mind this morning? Anybody want to just say anything? How good God is. Praise His holy name. Tell people what He's done for you. Has anybody got a testimony this morning? Anybody? Well, let's give the Lord a chance to have a praise anyway. Amen. Tell people what he's done for you. And live and breathe Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the Savior of my soul. Why? Let's see. Yeah. We're going to win. Hmm. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Victory in Jesus. Let's get happy this morning. Let's smile a little bit and be happy. Praise God. I heard an old, old story How our Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him and all His beauty. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood, I heard about His healing, of His cleansing power revealing. I made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He 
sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Lord, I like him. Amen. <laughs> I heard a battle of mansion. He is built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me <coughs> with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me through victory beneath the cleansing blood. <laughs> Amen. Let that air come on. Woo! Get warm up in here, what? Amen. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. so much for coming this morning. Thank you. And a glorious day of the Lord. <laughs> Anybody want to close us in point in the word, please? Anybody? Grace is asking. Anybody want to close in the word of prayer? Baby? You know. <laughs> Close in the word. Thank you. <laughs> you got to push it on. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. Lord, we want to thank you for this day for so many reasons. We acknowledge what has happened to bring us to this point. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the assurance that we have eternal life waiting on us because of what's happened. Lord, I want to thank you for my grandchild being in church, Lord, and that I'm able to raise her in church atmosphere. Yes, Lord. You just touch her. You just feel her. And keep her close to you. Lord, I just ask favor on all the ones that we're able to come today, Lord, and I have to be here. And Lord, you just touch them also. And Lord, I just thank you again. Forgive us, Lord, you don't fail us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all again. I'm here today. And somebody else.